It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Back to the program. We've got Congressman Rick Crawford is on the line. Rick, it's always great to have you on, sir. Hey, good to be with you. I just want to say I had an incredible uh, time uh, interviewing your colleague, uh, House Intel Committee Chairman Devin Nunes. It was great uh, that he was in Arkansas, and I know you were instrumental in getting him here. Well, yeah, we uh, we served together on the Intel Committee. He's done some remarkable work, and uh, you know, but for his uh, tenacity and leadership on this issue, we might not know anything about this business with uh, uh, Peter Strzok, uh, Lisa Page. Um, you know, the, the business with Bruce Orr, um, you know, Fusion GPS, the dossier, all this kind of stuff. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's been pretty important a couple of years. It really, really has, uh, you know, and, and, you know, like you said, he is, uh, you know, kind of on the forefront of this. But, you know, I, I just uh, am really thankful that you're on that committee as well. I mean, and, uh, you know, we have an Arkansas delegate that's up there. You know, pursuing these facts and this truth, and you know the 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 media in so many instances is you know reporting what's dubbed fake news, and now we're getting these reports that you know the FBI, the DOJ, or the senior officials, you know they have this this pattern of leaking you know information to stories, and in some cases they they leak the information, then they use the news report to justify getting a, a FISA warrant. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Well, I hope people just really take a minute to to digest what you just said. And that is, it's it's not that that we're being anti FBI, anti law enforcement. I mean, you know, for crying out loud, the Democrats are calling for dismantling ICE. Uh, You know, that's a that's a that's a Democratic tenant. Um, We're not that. that's not our platform. Our platform is to hold accountable any federal agency. That's our job. That's our constitutional mandate. That's the oversight requirement that we have as members of Congress because I don't care what federal agency it is. Who's overseeing them if not Congress? We are co-equal, uh, you know, separate branch of government, and the administration, is, the executive branch, is, is, is that's the agency. That's the FBI, the Department of Justice, the EPA, the USDA, the Department of the Interior, you name it. And we have the responsibility uh, and actually the constitutional mandate to oversee those agencies. And if we don't do it, who's going to do it? And so, you know, these people that are charged with law enforcement, you know, God bless them, the rank-and-file FBI, I don't have a problem with them at all. In fact, the rank-and-file FBI, they're the ones that have a problem with their leadership. And if you ask these members that are out on the streets, that are out in the you know, the forward deployed areas around the world representing the United States and trying to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, bad actors are brought to justice. They are not happy with this leadership and this cabal in Washington that's set about to try and dismantle the Trump campaign and, and uh, really affect the outcome of the, of the election. You want to talk about Russian collusion, we've got all, uh, all the evidence you need to point to um, Hillary Clinton campaign and several uh, DOJ officials that themselves were colluding with Russia to affect the outcome of the election. And so this is what this evidence is pointing to. And we said from the very beginning, we're going to go where the facts take us. And the facts have taken us and point to the irony of this whole thing is that the ones that were screaming about Russia collusion were the ones who were themselves engaged in Russia collusion. Mm. Projection and deflection, you know, project the very thing you're guilty on. Uh, you're guilty of on your opponents. That certainly seems about what mm-hmm. what we're what we're seeing here. Um, one of the things I got to ask Chairman Nunes was because you know people have been talking about declassification of some documents this week, uh, the Bruce Orr documents and that sort of thing. But I asked him. I said, "Do you think the American people are ever going to get to actually see the FISA applications in the documents?" And he said, "Yes, I believe that they will." Uh, do you do you think that as well? Yeah, I think you know. There's obviously a process uh, by which this happens. Um, you know, there's probably one of two or three ways that that uh, where this could materialize. And certainly, the president is going to have uh, a say in that. He ultimately can can declassify something. 
you know, we just we, what we have to do is make sure that we weigh this um, and are very careful and and uh, circumspect in this whole process that we don't um, create more problems than we're seeking to solve. And so that's why we got to get a lot of um, uh, you know, legalize on this to make sure that everything that we do is done appropriately so as not to uh, compromise. You've heard the term sources and methods. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be careful that we're not uh, disclosing sources and methods. And, and that's always a key consideration when you're uh, declassifying, particularly, uh, you know, this type of information. But it's, it's interesting to note that there is a, there's a couple of things that people should be aware of. What these DOJ officials did was they initiated a counterintelligence investigation. So you might hear it called a CI investigation, a counterintelligence investigation against a U.S. citizen, not only a U.S. citizen, but a political campaign. First time in history that's ever happened. So if you've got a problem with this campaign from a legal standpoint, then, then just uh, you know, initiate an investigation, um, uh, you know, you don't, it doesn't need to be intelligent. So what they did was they leveraged, um, really, and I think misled the FISA court so that they could use the CI uh, umbrella, an enterprise investigation, which basically means they're simply, you know, no defined parameters with no timeline and gives them all kinds of latitude to do whatever they want. And keeping in mind, of course, that this was, uh, this is a U.S. citizen and a political campaign. I mean, there's no precedent for this at all. I mean, it's the first time it's ever happened, I believe, in, in history. And so, you know, you've got to wonder at this point, did these DOJ officials just do this of their own accord because they were just that uh, amped up against the possibility of a, of a Trump presidency? Or was there something, uh, some directive from higher up uh, or somebody that said, hey, y'all need to do this because uh, we got to make sure that Hillary wins, and so whatever you got to do to to ensure that that happens, go on ahead and do it. Use whatever means necessary uh, to make that happen. I don't know. We'll get the answer to those questions at some point in time. But uh, what we do know is, if there was evidence of collusion uh, on the part of the Trump campaign, you can bet we'd know about it. Mm -hmm. uh, not only yes. would, would would we have uncovered it, but you can you can bet that Adam Schiff would have gone straight to the first camera he saw. And told everything he knew because that's exactly what he does. I've been, uh, you know, I, I when it all comes out and, and when everything's, you know, s s oh, when it's all said and done, I, I just hope that the media, uh, I mean, I hope the media actually reports on it. And I, when I mean the media, I mean the mainstream media, the ones that have sensationalized this idea of Russian collusion, and they've got a significant portion of the country that believes that somehow. Uh, Donald Trump stole the election, and so they don't have to confront the fact that leftism was rejected. Um, maybe people are more concerned with the economy than they are with what pronouns that they need to use to be politically correct. And so because of that, and I mentioned this in the first hour, because there's a lot of people that think that the election was somehow, you know, Russia-influenced or let's just say it was stolen from the Democrats. Not, has not, they don't want to admit that Hillary might be the worst candidate ever. Now we have the Silicon Valley uh, giants that it appear to be putting their thumbs on the scale here by censoring conservative content and things like that. And I don't know, Does the, and this is an honest question, I, I don't know, does the government get involved here eventually? Are they monopolies? What happens, Congressman Crawford? The reality is, you know, most Americans now are, are disseminating political information, expressing themselves using these, quote, private companies. I mean, they are private, but mm -hmm. it's a kind of a train wreck that we're headed for and i don't really know what the answer is well here's what i want to encourage people to do um this is a market-based solution and people we have gotten so uh dependent on um what what are essentially now de facto utilities things like google and and the twitter and facebook i shut my facebook accounts down uh for a variety of reasons and Guess what? I still woke up the next morning, and, and you know the world continued to turn. So I am really a, a hesitant to say we need to regulate these private entities, but I think there needs to be, uh, from a from a government standpoint, 
But I think the American people need to make a determination. Is this something they want to continue to support? And when people get tired of it, they'll vote with their feet, and the marketplace will do the work for them. At some point in time, these companies have to change their their uh, their business model. And I'm talking about from the standpoint of, uh, you know, filtering content that they don't particularly like. That not That's not necessarily uh, – uh, a criminal offense. It's not necessarily something that uh, requires uh, government regulation. When they start, when these companies start breaking the law, when they start violating people's civil liberties, that's when the government will take a role. But from the standpoint of censoring, it's not a government entity. It's a marketplace, and this is a marketplace dynamic. And so I, I hope that people recognize that and will take the appropriate action themselves to correct the marketplace. As long as you give them their services, but they have no incentive to change. But if people quit using their services, if people you know drop Twitter and drop Facebook and drop whatever other uh, you know tech services out there that you know purports to make their lives better, if they say I'm not going to use it anymore because I don't think you're you're uh, you know running a fair organization or something that's uh, you know a, a, a good service to me as a conservative, then stop using it. Mm-hmm. And at some point in time, they'll get the message. But I don't think we, at this point, I don't think we have risen to the to the level of government regulation. Uh, and I think what you what you've got to be careful about is if you do that, you might confer status on them as potentially a utility, which then gives them standing um, as uh, to to run as sort of a legal monopoly. You know, just like you know, we only have, we only have one utility company that provides power in the city, right? And that's a legal entity, and and and. So that's okay. Well, we don't want to confer that status on these businesses because then that helps probably helps them escape scrutiny and helps them escape um, the the consequences of a market based uh, consumer reaction. Hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely. Uh, I guess I, I see what you're saying, and I think um, I, I just wonder in order for that to happen, in order for people to to vote with their feet in a way and quit using it. I just wonder if there's uh, there's going to be more revelations as to exactly you know what some of these companies have been doing you know wh- whether it's privacy or, or or whatever it whatever the case may be because because my my whole well, thing is if if you were to start let's say a competitor to Facebook are you inevitably going to be relying on Google to get it to the top of the search results you know and and there, these companies seem to almost be colluding against you know conservatives sure. go ahead. Oh, I think there's. I absolutely think that there is a uh, a level of of collusion there in the marketplace with regard to tech companies that rely on each other uh, to advance their own bottom line. And and let's keep in mind that that's what this is about. This is about advancing their own bottom lines. And in the process, you know, you you know, you find uh, uh, that Facebook, Google, Twitter, whatever, um, do provide a, a service and make your life easier to some degree. You know, life wasn't necessarily all that bad before we had those things. I'm not suggesting we go backwards, but what I am suggesting is that if you, if you don't like what's taking place in the marketplace, do something about it. There's a variety of things people can do. Why do we not have a, a, an, a, an alternative to Google? Well, you know, Google got so big, and we allowed them to. They got so big that, that uh, you know, no one else has been able to come in and replicate that and be competitive. And I think, quite frankly, that you know the tech cabal that exists in Silicon Valley is content with that because you handle that, we'll handle this, okay? You, so Google, you go do your thing over there. Um, you know, uh, Twitter, we'll go do our thing over here. Amazon, you're set up over there, and they kind of got it all worked out together as they you know kind of chop up the marketplace in various pieces, and and here's what's going on. But unless and until some other people recognize you know there's 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 room to move in the marketplace and we can do some things differently and this is what we're going to be up against we're going to be up against these tech giants and you know this is really bottom line driven so i don't know I, you know look if i could write an algor- algorithm to replace google i'd do it today i'm not smart enough to do that but there's people out there that are just they've, they've just got to be um capitalized well enough that they can go out and and, and challenge these tech companies and I'd like to see some startups move away from Silicon Valley. 
uh, you know, I've been out there and I've talked to these 40 pound brains before and, and they don't have anything that we don't have. They, they just have a, an established uh, system out there that allows folks uh, under the right circumstances to be able to bring something to the market. And, you know, it's, it's, it's taken place over a period of years, mm. and it's not that it can't be replicated elsewhere. It's just that's where it has, you know, they have coalesced around this tech corridor in Silicon Valley, and that's where all the things happen. It doesn't have to be that way, but that's the way it is right now. Congressman Rick Crawford, I appreciate it. Uh, it's always great, and I, I love the discussion and, and your thoughts on these uh, subjects. And I know the people of Arkansas are, you know, uh, excited about the work you're doing and uh, pleased with what you're doing on the House Intel Committee. And uh, I just I can't thank you enough, sir. You bet. My privilege. Thanks, right. Yes. Have a great weekend. Folks, 